It's one of the most striking buildings in the world and home to some of the most important modern art. It has been hailed as the greatest building of our time. The Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, Spain. Engineers said the futuristic design could not be built. Yet this gleaming jewel changed architecture forever and single-handedly reinvented Bilbao as an international tourism hotspot. This spectacular masterpiece owes its success to some surprising engineering connections. A trundle wheel. Like visiting a very futuristic dentist. Sir Walter Raleigh. I'm standing by for a huge gush of water to sink my boat. An egg. Definitely real eggs. A Russian submarine. It's gone, it's just blown clean off. And a volcano. I'm going to find out just how hot it is. In the late 1980s, Bilbao was a grimy manufacturing city, struggling as its steel and shipping industries were collapsing. But the local government had a plan to reinvent the city as a hub of tourism and culture. Coincidentally, the prestigious Guggenheim Foundation decided to open one of its world-famous art galleries in Europe. The deal was made. They decided that if they were going to build an art gallery to exhibit some of the world's greatest contemporary artists, it should be a work of art in its own right. It was to be the centerpiece for Bilbao's reinvention, one of the first in a new generation of iconic buildings to rival the Sydney Opera House or Eiffel Tower. Innovative, radical, shocking even. Architect Frank Gehry's designs were striking, to say the least. This is one of his original sketches. And, yeah, it doesn't look much like the real thing. But that's why Gehry got the job. He's famous for his outlandish designs. Bill Bauer wanted an icon, and the Guggenheim was to be it. But turning this into that was going to require technology never before applied to architecture. Gehry's design called for delicate, complex, curved walls, and the Guggenheim Foundation wanted huge exhibition spaces. To achieve both, the walls had to be thin. But this created the first problem. The structural engineers faced the problem of ensuring the building was strong enough to support itself. Concrete would have worked, but the walls would have been too thick. So the engineers decided to use a thin steel skeleton. But how could they be sure that the delicate framework would be strong enough to support the entire building? The answer is in the shape. An example, if I just hold this piece of paper out, well, clearly it's not very stiff and strong at all, but if I change its shape, put a curve in it, suddenly it's a lot stiffer and a lot stronger. So, changing the shape of a material by adding a curve makes it stronger. And just like this art, the Guggenheim is all curves, which led to a surprising suggestion. The engineers quickly realised that they could turn the curved walls to their advantage by making them support the building and, in the process, create huge open gallery spaces. In fact, the engineers asked Gary to make the curves even more pronounced, even more curvy. It's not often that an architect is asked to be even more outlandish by the engineers. The secret of the Guggenheim strength comes from an egg and a very special dam. Eggshell is famously fragile stuff. I mean, it's got, it just crumbles. But, as it turns out, chickens are perhaps better engineers than we've ever given them credit, because if you form eggshell into the right shape, it's capable of withstanding some pretty amazing forces, as I shall now demonstrate with this experiment.
Between these two sheets of plastic, there are 384 eggs glued in place with silicon. These eggs are not hard-boiled, they're just as the chicken provided them. All we need now is a weight, something heavy. This will be perfect. Weighs about three quarters of a ton, maybe. Only problem is, it's just needs to be a bit more manageable. But that's okay, a few modifications, we can achieve that. Take it away. Quite rugged and rigorous modifications, but they'll do the job. I'm not just crushing the car for fun, although it is fun. The car is going to be the load for my experiment. By compacting it, I'm distributing the weight more evenly. Modifying cars, very fashionable with young people. Yep, there you go. Modified. Here to get things cracking is a man who knows all about curves. Structural engineer Dr. Amo Wadi. Yeah, you probably guess we're gonna put the car on the eggs. Well, that's the theory, Emma. Yep. How much difference can a shape make? I mean, how can an egg support a car? Well, they are weak in one direction. Let's say if we loaded it like this on my index finger and my thumb, then we have one principal direction with a very, very weak curvature, which is almost flat, so it's almost a single curve. If we load it, however, on this way with the crown, then we have a very strong double curvature of equal amount in that direction. To support the car, the weight has to be transmitted around the eggshell to the ground. The double curve allows the forces to flow evenly around a symmetrical shape. When the egg's on its side, the forces have to travel on a less direct path and around a shape that's not symmetrical, so the forces flow unevenly. This makes the egg weaker. The deeper the curve, the more vertical and so more direct the path is to the base, making it strong. So, it's those curves that give it the strength. Yes. And here, this is, this is rather like when I curve that piece of paper and suddenly it becomes much stronger, much stiffer because of the shape. Yes. And this then is a double curve. Yes. So, well, simply speaking, you've got twice the effect. It's got twice the effect. In this case, you've only got uh, the increase in strength in one direction. Here, you've got an increase in two directions. And it's not just eggs that have curves in all the right places. In 1902, the egg shape inspired an American engineer, Gardner Stuart Williams, to build the world's first double-curved dam. Usually, dams are built a bit like this. Well, not exactly like this, it's not a dam, it's an art installation. But the point is, traditionally, dams are narrower at the top, growing bigger and wider towards the bottom, using sheer size and bulk to hold back the weight of a man-made lake. Concrete dams often have one curve, like arches, but tipped on their side. As the water presses against the curve, the pressure is spread along it. The combination of sheer size and the arch shape holds back the water, but it takes a lot of concrete to build. Still, for strength, one curve is good, but two curves are better. Williams realized this when he designed a radical new type of dam in Ithaca, New York State. His new cupola dam needed far less material because making it double curved meant it could be much thinner but just as strong. Williams designed his dam to be 27 meters high and just two and a half meters thick. That's less than half the thickness of a traditional arch dam of that height very thin indeed. So narrow in fact that locals were so worried it might burst, they insisted construction was halted at a third of its planned height. Although it only reached nine meters high, Williams' dam still holds back water in Ithaca. And his double curved idea continues to be used in dams today. But just how strong is a double curve? Is it enough for these eggs to take the weight of an entire car? Are you happy it's lined up? A modification. I've already modified the car. 
It's important, that's why we've got to adjust the whole thing now that the car is lowered down flat onto the eggs because obviously if it goes down one side or the other first, then all the weight will be focused